Hello friends. Uh, so I've been hard at work on another script. Um, it's pretty bare bones at the moment, but I had a friend ask me to set it up on one of their ships. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to record it. Um, I'm going to hopefully use this as a like how to set this up. Um, I'm hoping to add in a few more like quality of life features and things and also update it for Mercury um, before I publish it. Um, but we'll see. Uh, I tend to kind of lose steam once I get uh, <laughs> good enough. So we'll see what happens. But for now, uh, I'm going to set it up and we can show how this works. And I probably should have figured out where the core of the ship is first before I set off on this journey. And in fact, I'm probably going to start this over. Oh no, here it is. Core. Great. Off to a great start. All right. So basically, this is a script in three parts. So there is the setup, and then there is a um, controller, and then there is a distributor. So right now, I'm going to go with the designer, because that's the first thing we're going to have to do. Uh, we're going to paste the configuration. Uh, and this guy is also going to need a data bank. I'm still in build mode. I'm still in build mode. Okay, it's just lagging on me. All right, so this one here, um, as far as settings that you're going to want to know, um, basically this is just for how it's going to look when you're working on it. Um, this is the one step of the process that you have to be here in person to do, um, because it's actually an AR configure. Um, so here, uh, okay, apparently I didn't put that as an export, I'll have to figure that out later, but it's fine. Um, so if I hit activate on this, what it should do is basically look through the whole ship and find all of the lights on the ship. Now what we're hoping for here is for a fancy design on the front of the ship um, to go through a sequence of lights. Um, so here, basically, I've got a few hotkeys set up. I'll have to put some instructions in for how they work. But basically, um, you can do Alt-1 to do a sequence. And so I'm going to do a sequence of this whole thing here. Every time you select one, it automatically selects that one as the next one in the sequence. This arrow is bigger than I remember it being. I have to look at that. And so basically what we're wanting to do is we're wanting to do a, a sequence here that fades, much like it's doing right now, but right now it's due to a carefully programmed um, blinking, basically. So they basically are in a very, very slow blink. Um, but it doesn't look that smooth, and what we wanted to do is we wanted to have the colors change as well. Um, so that's what I did. I already had something like this on a previous ship, um, but I've gotten a lot more advanced since then. Where's the actual exact front? What do you think, 252? I think it's 252. Yeah, I think it's 252. Where do you go with that? Oh, I accidentally unselected, okay. Oh no, and I fell. So we're going to connect 253 to 252 as well. Then we're going to unselect it. We're going to go back to the beginning. Uh, we need to set this as a start, which I think is Alt-2. Nope. Alt-2 seems to be undo. Let's connect that back together again. Alt-3. Yeah, I think that's right. So that's the starting point now. So we now have a starting point going up one side. And then we'll do the other side, uh, but this video is already taking long enough, so I will do that later. Uh, it should theoretically be able to handle multiple sequences at the same time. Um, so you should be able to have, yeah, more than one at once. Um, I don't remember if there's like a save or something here. It's been a while since I've done this part of it. Uh, there's an option for that's save. So yes, four, save. All right, so I have now just saved this in. Um, so you can see it gives you um, a log there because debug mode is on um, that just shows you basically like which IDs are in this sequence. Um, and so it actually goes through, it actually progresses through 
the whole thing and where is it over here so it actually progresses through the whole sequence that you have in this like tree and basically it iterates them to figure out which step along the way it is and then it passes that step so even if there's a branch so you could have one light branch off into two lights and it will follow both of those paths and then give them the same iteration um i'm not sure what it'll do if you branch them back together i didn't test that case so you know if i release this uh don't break it um but that's sort of the idea so now that we've got that one in place uh that's it for the configurer um now what we need is we need the controller um, so I'm going to pop that into place. The controller is also, where's my programming boards? The controller is also going to need, um, a connection to this data bank. Uh, let me figure out what else it's going to need. It's also going to need an emitter. Um, might also need a connection to the core. I'm not sure. So hang on, let me get the code first. Uh, controller. Okay, U advanced, paste, and then build six here, no plug link. Oh right, emitters aren't picky. It's receivers are picky. You have to have, you actually have to have it connected to the right slot. Uh, the rest of these, I've got them figured out how to do them dynamically, so it's fine. Um, I don't think we need the core for anything in here. Um, let me actually just quickly check through my code. So it looks for a core unit, but no, it never uses it. Okay, cool. So we're fine. Um, so now this one here, basically what it does is it holds all of your settings. So, and there's a bunch of them, um, like a bunch. Um, I'm not sure they all work. I'm pretty sure it doesn't work not to be in rainbow mode. Um, so, you know, we'll see if I fix that or not. Um, edit little parameters. So <coughs> um, you should change the comm channel. Um, just so that you don't end up interfering with anyone else if you're in the vicinity because this this all works by emitters and receivers. Um, and then there's like the max length of the emitter message. I set it to 500 just to be safe and um, the frequency so it's only going to ping out through the emitter a maximum of once every 0.2 seconds. It does a lot of calculations in order to figure out how the sequence is going to actually look. Um, so you want to be careful that you don't amp that up too high because it ends up sending I think 10 different messages as part of this configuration process. I've got the default RGB set to a nice orange color. Um, it's I already set this up for Mercury um, by going in the like less than one. Um, but I have this amplifier here, um, which is designed, I originally designed this back in the old days for when you used to be able to overpower lights, which you can do again now. Um, so amplify isn't going to be useful above five in Mercury. Um, but it, because this is running in pre-Mercury, because I'm actually installing this on the ship in live in the live server, um, I set it to 255 just so it's like literally translating that one up to the 255 because the lights have changed from being like white being 255 comma 255 comma 255 to being just 111. So um, that's my way of compensating for that while partially prepping for the next. Um, here I've set it so that basically i've got a rainbow coded in so it's a full like red red orange yellow green blue purple uh, and it, it moves through in sequence <coughs> um, and you can actually set here how many rainbows you want to be visible on one stretch so i actually like it where you can't see a whole rainbow along the whole stretch um, i find it gives a nice smooth transition which i find visually appealing um, so i set it to 0 0.7 so you've got most of a rainbow at any one time it's currently visible um, and then these are your fade settings. So right now, 75% of the lights will be on at all times. 15% of them will be in transition between on and off. So there'll be some like dimming going on. Um, and then the number off will be 10%. So you can adjust this. So you saw on the top earlier how it's got the dark patch that's moving around basically. So basically the percent off reduces or increases the size of that dark patch. And then the fade is the transition between the two. And then the on is which ones are actually fully lit. Um, uh, sweep mode, I think, is broken right now, so I'll probably just leave that at one. Um, sweep cycles per minute, basically, is literally just like how fast is it is it sweeping. So right now it's at 10, so it's once every six seconds it cycles over. Uh, the rainbow cycle length is 200 um, ticks, 
and the tick time is 0 0.04 seconds. Um, so basically this just determines how fast the rainbow moves, how in-depth it is, like how many detailed steps there are. Um, yeah, and I think the cycle hertz is how often the frame rate is updating for the fade. Because um, there's a lot of math that goes into every every iteration, every step as it's going. Well, actually most of the math is up front. Um, so that's the controller. Um, now basically what that's going to do when I launch it is it's going to run through all the math and it's going to send out encoded information through the emitter, um, which is going to be set up for the um, actual distributors to pick up. So how many lights did I have in there? Um, in the end there was 38. 38 lights, okay. And I can only hook up nine per programming board, so I'm gonna need four programming boards to get all the lights. Now, here's the cool part about this, is that um, I've set this up, and why I did it this way, why I have this whole configurator and everything, is you can hook any of the controllers, any of the programming boards up to any of the lights. It doesn't matter. We've defined the sequence here, and it handles all of the math in the back end, all of the sequencing and everything to make sure that it's always affecting the right light in the sequence based on the sequence that we defined. Um, so now basically what I just need to do is I just need to stack a bunch of programming boards in here and then just go connect them all. Um, the only catch is the receiver has to be hooked up to the right thing because of course receivers are finicky. You have to have the right slot. So. I'm just going to go two, three, four. Um, is that right? Is that going to be enough? Hopefully that's enough. And so for that, we're going to need two receivers. So we're going to set those up uh, for connections. I'm going to specifically define it's like an out plug. Oh, wait, I need the code first. One second. Uh, so distributor. So let's say here. Nope, not construct. Advanced, paste, advanced, paste, advanced, paste, advanced, paste. And we're gonna just hook these guys up to the receiver. Oh wait, hang on. I jumped the gun. Uh, delete link. Delete link. How do I do? Can we stop? Okay, <coughs> here we are. Select an unplug link. So the receiver needs to go to the receiver. The receiver needs to go to the receiver. It should only be a one-way relationship. I'm gonna hook up a. I'm gonna hook up a switch to actually turn them on. Um, so sorry. Uh, select an unplug link. Receiver to the, to the receiver. Receiver to the receiver. If I was smart, that would be the first one, which I think it is. But I don't really want to test that live, so it's fine. Um, and now the problem is we need to actually get these out to where the lights are. So I'm going to show you a little linking trick that I use for uh, engines and fuel tanks all the time, uh, which is, oh, I got stuck. Oy. To move them out where you're going to need them to do the connections, because um, adding and removing connections doesn't get put on the undo stack. So basically, these four programming boards are all going to continue to live here. But first, I'm going to stick them all out there do the connections, and then I can just backspace them back to where they need to be. Don't need to be fancy. Doo -doo -doo. Aye. Keep on getting stuck on the door. I'm not sure what ship this is, by the way. It's a pretty ship. I should figure out who actually designed this. I think it's called the Gellerhorn. Um, which, I'm not sure what that's a reference to. Um, some sort of mythological thing, I think. Should figure that out. Anyways, so now we're here. So we have this sequence of lights here. So we just go, yeah, sure, you. And just for fun, because I feel like being ridiculous about it, I'm going to just... be all willy-nilly about which one goes to which. Probably should have put more programming boards though because it occurs to me now that uh, I'm gonna need more for the other half. But I will do that not while recording because that will just increase the time but not actually show anything more useful. 
Okay. Now this should be a little easier. Okay, so you already hooked up something. Ugh. It's a bit of a pain to see because the boards are so far away. one, you're this one, you're that one, you're not hooked up to anything. I could have been more methodical about this in a way that would have been a little more sensible, but you know what? It's fine. And now, there's supposed to be 38 on here. I think there's a lot of little ones on the back, so I'm actually going to grab this guy and bring him around the bend because I think I'm going to need him. This is going to be a lot more heavily weighted towards this end than the back end. I don't have any compensation for how big the lights are because that sounds like a nightmare. Um. curious what all these connections coming in are. I'm guessing he's probably got a switch to turn these all on. Alright, you're full. Where'd the other one go? Where did I leave him? Did he not move? He didn't move. so I can actually see it, bump it up a bit, and oh, show my connections. Nope, we're done. All right. Hello, Mr. Programming Board. I have need of you. Goodness gracious. So many lights. This is bigger than my test case was. Which shouldn't matter, but you know. Gonna run out again. Done. Okay, you know what? That's just gonna have to do. It'll be fine. Okay. Now that I've moved these a bunch of times already, I should be able to just go back, back, nope, oh, back, 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 all that shuffling. Back. Back, 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 back. All right. Oh, oh come on. And now, here they all are. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get some switches. So here uh, and here. And uh, I'm going to throw a delay line in between them so that I only need one switch. Um, because as it happens, um, oh, uh, we're going to need a relay. 
Um, the second one, the controller has to actually launch after the distributors, uh, just because I don't have any error checking yet on how, like, if it's actually sent the messages, like, if the messages have been received or not. Um, so we got to make sure that the things that are intended to receive the message are actually online and running before um, the controller is actually trying to send the messages. So we'll throw that through a relay, the relay will go to a delay line and fire up all these boards, and then the delay line will fire up the switch, which will fire up the controller. And I'm going to just quickly have a look here and make sure this makes sense, that this is my controller code, yes, yes, yes. Okay, and then these guys should all be good. Emitters and receivers should be fine, except, of course, for the fact that I need the channel. Um, so the channel is... change this. Which, as I said before, I will change. Once I'm not on the stream. Or rather, on the recording. Alright, channels list, change this. Okay, now theoretically, we'll see. It should work. So fire it up. Fires up four programming boards you see in the bottom right there. So at this point, and now the fifth programming board, so they should have the nice orange color that I mentioned at this point because it should be working through processing out. Ah, see the, f oh wait, that's the blinking fade. Okay, that's my fade. I need to disable the blinking on all of them. It's going to be a pain. That's the blinking fade. And now the rainbow's here. So have a look at that. see here on the front end it's a lot more condensed due to how many lights there are in quick succession here. So at some point he'll probably remove these uh, containers again. he just slap these on here I assume for salvage or something. And now we see this beauteous rainbow sequence. And you can see it's not a full, like I said, it's not a full rainbow on this one. But like if I want now I can just hop back in here and we can just change that. So let's do let's do just a few setting adjustments and try it again. So here uh, we're gonna go actually do it this way. We'll go through little parameters because there's so much code in there. Um, rainbows visible. So let's bump this up to actually to uh, 2.2. Um, so we'll have a little bit more than two. So you'll really be able to see two at any one time. Um, a little harder with the containers in the way, but you get the idea. Um, the amp is 255, that's fine. Uh, fade's fine. Yeah, let's maybe not mess around with this too much. Well, yeah, let's, let's bump this up. Uh, so let's set this up to, no, let's set it down, actually. No, it was already down pretty low. Let's set it up. We'll say 20% off. Um, <coughs> and... 65% on and 15% transition. Does that math line up? 80. Yeah, that math lines up. Pretty sure I did it proportionally, so even if your math is wrong, it will still do it proportionally, but I'm not 100% sure, so let's just make them actually add up to 100. All right, apparently that delay line didn't turn off the controller, so I'll have to look at that too. Um, but now we turn it back on again and run! Run, core, run! I want to see the orange. So it finishes calculating the fade first. I think, was that the blink fade? Or was that my fade? I got to disable that blink thing. I think that's my fade. Yeah, there's the blinking one. You can see how it's a harsh transition for the blinking one, whereas mine is a smooth transition, right? And now we can see a lot more rainbow. So when it's actually colored up, you can see more of the sequence. And over on this end, you're going to see quite a bit. All right, so yeah, that's the basic uh, demonstration slash instructions on how to set up this light script that I made. Uh, I'm going to shut off the feed now and go and fix this to actually run on both halves of his ship. So, hope this was helpful, hope people are interested. Um, I'll get this out there at some point. 
Bye.